All right, guys, how are we doing today? So sorry I can't be there, but life sometimes throws us curves, so we just got to roll with it. I wanted to try and do this with you still because this is such an important scene, and it's going to set you up for success for tomorrow when we try and do our first whole class fishbowl activity where we discuss um, Atticus as well as Mr. Gilmer and how this trial is going down. So I want to make sure that we are all on point. We have three lesson objectives today where you can objectively summarize chapter 18 and analyze how the reader's perspective, there's that word again, is different from scouts in a key scene in chapter 19 and how this affects the reader. If we also have time, we're going to compare the similarities and differences between a key scene in the novel and how that scene is portrayed in the film. So what you need for class today is your Chromebook which you will need to have your Canvas tab open as well as a tab open to your Google Drive. So please make sure you have both open so that way you can flip back and forth. You're also going to need your copy of To Kill a Mockingbird, which if you do not have one, obviously you will not have one supplied to you today. You will need to click on the digital book that I have had uploaded on the Canvas page since the beginning of this module. You also are going to need your earphones so that you can listen to this PowerPoint during class without interrupting anybody else's thinking. If you were trying to say you don't know where the To Kill a Mockingbird online version is, here is a nice picture of what your Canvas modules page should look like with a fantastic arrow that is pointing out that your To Kill a Mockingbird novel is going to be at the very top, so easy for you to find. Now, just remember that the page numbers will probably not be the same, but the lesson and the worksheet that you will be completing today starts at the very beginning of Chapter 18, so all you need to do is find the beginning of Chapter 18. So, what I need you to do first is open up to your Google Drive. We started this document on Friday, and you will be completing it today. So, that, uh, that document is called your Trial Tracker. So I'm going to give you a minute to find that if you'd like to pause the video and wait until you put it up. All right, you should have your document up by now. You will see that we started Chapter 17 on Friday, which should be completely filled in at this point. If you have not completely filled that in, you need to make sure you finish that today. By the end of class today, though, you also need to make sure you have Chapter 18 completely finished. At the end of this uh, lesson, you will also need to go back to your Canvas page and click on the Counting Chickens tab, which you can find under Lesson 4. And again, it has today's date on it, so it should be easy for you to find. But I'll bring that back up at the end of this lesson. So you should be looking at your chapter 18 questions for today. Again, you need to make sure that you have analyzed this part of the text for the fishbowl activity that we are going to be working on tomorrow. So I'm going to start this off with you. We are again going to be looking at the testimony um, of Mayella Yule today and looking at how Mr. Gilmer and Atticus Finch interview the person on the stand in different ways. So everyone should be opening their book to chapter 18, page 239, and we're going to be looking at Gilmer questioning Mayella. So I'll give you about 10 seconds to get your book open, and then we're going to start this off together. All right, so I'm going to start off by beginning this with you. That way we are answering the first question together and then I will let you go off on your own. But someone was booming again. Mayella Violet Yule. A young girl walked to the witness stand. As she raised her hand and swore that the evidence she gave would be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help her God, she seemed somehow fragile looking. But when she sat facing us in the witness chair, she became what she was, a thick-bodied girl accustomed to strenuous labor. In Macon County, it was easy to tell when someone bathed regularly, as opposed to yearly levations. Mr. Ewell had a scalded look, as if an overnight soaking had deprived him of protective layers of dirt. His skin appeared to be sensitive to the elements. Mayella looked as if she tried to keep clean, and I was reminded of the row of red geraniums in the Ewell yard. Mr. Gilmore asked Mayella to tell the jury in her own words what happened on the evening of November 21st of last year. Just in her own words, please. Mayella sat silently. 
Where were you at dusk on that evening? began Mr. Gilmer patiently. On the porch. Which porch? Ain't but one. The front porch. What were you doing on the porch? Nothing. Judge Taylor said, just tell us what happened. You can do that, can't you? Mayella stared at him and burst into tears. She covered her mouth with her hand and sobbed. Judge Taylor let her cry for a while. Then he said, that's enough now. Don't be afraid of anybody here as long as you tell the truth. All this is strange to you, I know, but you've no nothing to be ashamed of and nothing to fear. What are you scared of? Mayella said something behind her hands. What was, what was that? asked the judge. Him, she sobbed, pointing at Atticus. Mr. Finch? She nodded vigorously, saying, Don't want him doing me like he done, Papa. Try and make him out left-handed. Judge Taylor scratched his thick white hair. It was plain that he had never been confronted with a problem of this kind. How old are you? he asked. Nineteen and a half, Mayella said. Judge Taylor cleared his throat and tried unsuccessfully to speak in soothing tones. Mr. Finch has no idea of scaring you, he growled. And if he did, I'm here to stop him. That's one thing I'm sitting up here for. Now you're a big girl, so you just sit up straight and tell the, tell us what happened to you. You can do that, can't you? I whispered to Jim. Has she got good sense? Jim squinted down at the witness stand. Can't tell yet, he said. She's got enough sense to get the judge sorry for her, but she might be just, oh, I don't know. Mollified, Mayella gave Atticus a final terrified glance and said to Mr. Gilmer, well, sir, I was on the porch, and and he came along, and you see, there was this old chiffero in the yard. Papa brought it, brought in to chop for kindling. Papa told me to do it while he was off in the woods, but I wasn't feeling strong enough then, so he came back. Who's he? Mayella pointed to Tom Robinson. I'll have to ask you to be more specific, please, said Mr. Gilman. The reporter can't put down gestures very well. That in yonder, she said, Robinson. Then what happened? I said, come here and bust up this shipper roll for me. I got a nickel for you. He could have done it easy enough. He could. So he come in and he come in the yard and I went in the house to get him a nickel and I turned around and before I knew it, he was on me. Just run up behind me, he did. He got me around the neck, cussing me and saying dirt. I fought and hollered, but he had me around the neck. He hit me again and again. Mr. Gilmore waited for Mayella to collect herself. She had twisted her handkerchief into a sweaty rope. When she opened it to wipe her face, it was a mass of creases from her hot hands. She waited for Mr. Gilmore to ask another question. But when he didn't, she said, He chucked me on the floor and choked me and took advantage of me. Did you scream? asked Mr. Gilmore. Did you scream and fight back? Reckon I did. Hollered for all I was worth. Kicked and hollered loud as I could. Then what happened? I don't remember too good. But next thing I knew, Papa was in the room, standing over me, hollering, who done it, who done it. Then I sort of fainted, and the next thing I knew, Mr. Tate was pulling me up off of the floor and leaning me to the water bucket. Apparently, Mayella's recital had given her confidence, but it was not her father's brash kind. There was something stealthy about hers, like a steady-eyed cat with a twitchy tail. You say you fought him off as hard as he could? Fought him tooth and nail? asked Mr. Gilmer. I positively did, Mayella echoed her father. You are positive that he took full advantage of you. Mayella's face contorted, and I was afraid that she would cry again. Instead, she said, he done what he was after. Mr. Grimmel called attention to the hot day by wiping his head with his hand. That's all for the time being, he said pleasantly. But you stay there. I expect the bad Mr. Finch had some questions to ask you. All right, so that was Mr. Gilmer questioning Mayella, who is his witness. Now, our first question asks, how is Mayella feeling? So, if we look back at the beginning of this chapter where we introduce Mayella to the court, they describe her physically. Now, that's not what the question is asking us. The question is asking us, how is Mayella feeling? And uh, at the beginning of the chapter, right when Mr. Gilmer starts questioning, you notice that she's very short. He asks her what happened on that evening. She says, on the porch. This is where it happened. Three words. That's all she gives. Eight but one, the front porch. What were you doing on the front porch? Nothing. She's being very, very short until the point that she all of a sudden bursts into tears. So how would you describe how she's feeling right now? She's bursting into tears. 
Well, I can infer that Mayella was feeling very scared and nervous because of how Atticus treated her father when he was on the stand. And I know that, and I can support my inference because first she points to Atticus and then says, don't want him doing me like he done Papa, which shows she was scared he would also pick on her. So you're going to, again, make your answer very short and to the point. This does not have to be any long-winded answer. One sentence, maybe two at max to get your information across. Again, your answer should be summarizing that the answer to this question, and your text evidence is one line that best supports your answer. So your quote needs to make sure it matches up with your answer or your text evidence isn't going to make sense. So now on your own, you're going to answer this second question. What does Mayella say happened that night? Again, you're going to fill in your answer and then the text evidence that supports that. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to read the part where Atticus begins questioning Mayella on pages 242 through 246. When you get to the second half of this sheet, which is the green and the orange questions, you're going to see that this is Atticus questions Mayella part two, when um, Atticus asks Tom to come to the stand. And then you're going to see Atticus questions Mayella part three, which is when um, Atticus suggests uh, who gave Mayella the bruises. So we're going to have a lot of information that you're going to be putting in uh, the your answer column, but some of these don't need text evidence and I filled that in for you. So this should be a very quick activity for you as long as you've done the reading, but I highly suggest that even if you've done the reading, you go back and you read these pages one more time because again, you want to make sure you have this part of the text uh, so well memorized that tomorrow's activity is going to be super easy for you. When you're done with that, again, please make sure you go to Lesson 3, December 9th, and you click on the Counting Chickens tab. This is going to be your final activity that you're going to submit for part of your classwork grade today, and I will be monitoring this throughout the day. Lastly, please do not forget that you have homework today. Just because I'm not here does not mean the homework stops because tomorrow act activity is going to be so important. All right, tomorrow I'll also be collecting lesson four and five, so make sure it's ready to be turned in and stamped. Please remember, the quarter is almost over, so you do not want to miss any homework assignments at this point. If you have anything that needs to be turned in and you want to get rid of it, remember my bin is at the front of the room. You can't always drop that off. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me, or Mrs. Rayburn is also there, uh, as well as Ms. Bibbs, and she will, they will both answer any questions that you might have.